ultimate fate. But first, Antonel Slavin professes a great distrust of her boyfriend's actions. With her relationship on the line, Antonel hopes that the truth will set her anxiety at ease. He's nothing like he was at first. He used to love me, he used to hug me. Now when he gets off of work, he's too tired to make love. He, he hides his phone. He has a lock on it and we never was like that. You know, I, he sleeps with it under his pillow. When his phone rings, he hurry ups and leaves the room. He, he just, he seems fidgety when I get near his phone. Just all of a sudden his actions and everything about him has changed. He's going to work and he's getting off late and he never used to get off late. It's almost like he, he gets mad, he gets attitude and that's his reason for leaving. It's almost like he starts arguments so that he can leave because I know he's doing something wrong. And it's like woman intuition or something. You know when your man is doing something wrong. And it's like the love is not there. You know how a man get in the bed and hug you and kiss you? You know, he gets in the bed and rolls right over. It's like he has my heart in his hands and he's breaking it every day. And it's almost like he doesn't even care. And I care so much and he doesn't give. It's, it's like, it's just, I don't know. Every time he calls, I, I answer the phone for him. But when I call him, there's something different. You know, I can feel it that he's cheating on me, that he doesn't love me like he used to. He doesn't kiss me anymore. He doesn't, he doesn't, when he walks in, it's like he barely says something to me, like he cooked where the food, he goes in there and eat and goes straight to the room. Like I'm just his place to stay. Ken, age 25, a cell phone salesman accused of calling other women. Investigation day one. Provided with information on the suspect's daily schedule by Antonelle, Cheater's field agent stationed around the apartment she shares with her boyfriend. Operators pick up the suspect, known only as Ken, coming out of his home. He walks down the street for a distance, followed closely by investigators. Suddenly, an unknown vehicle stops, and Ken climbs in. The car is tailed to Ken's place of employment. Ken exits the car and enters his workplace, known for selling mobile phone technology. A short time later, the unknown female driver gets out of her car and enters the shop. Posing as customers, detectives plant a discreet surveillance camera across from the counter. While Ken is busy leaning, his unknown female companion barters for the ride. Ken grabs an item hanging behind him and gives it to her. As she prepares to leave, Ken grabs her arm and pulls her in for a quick thank you kiss. With their business concluded, the woman leaves Ken to his work and exits the store with her free cell phone accessory. Investigation day three. Once again, cheaters operatives scope out the home the suspect shares with Antonelle. Early into their shift, detectives catch Ken coming out of the apartment. He crosses the main road and is spotted on the phone as he trudges to his job. Agents spot the same vehicle stopping to pick Ken up to drive him the rest of the way to work. The suspect gives his paramour a hug before going in. A few hours later, near lunchtime, Ken exits and walks down to the corner gas station where his carpool partner waits. They drive to a fast food burger joint. Ken and his companion, now identified only as Scooby, grab a booth inside for a quiet lunch. About an hour later, they leave the restaurant. This time, Ken decides to drive, and Scooby climbs into the passenger seat. The pair is followed back to Ken's employment. Once there, Ken gets out and gives his date a big hug. She gets into her car and leaves as the suspect returns to work for the rest of the day. Investigation day four. Once Ken leaves for work, mobile agents jump into action, following him as he walks in the general direction of his job. Making it to his regular pickup point, Ken waits until his new girl comes around to pick him up. While Ken plays it cool with Scooby, Antonelle gets nothing but dead air, as evidenced in this recorded phone call. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. What you doing? Dang, you always busy every time I call you. Damn, what, which one are you talking about? Uh, can you make some spaghetti or something? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. So, are you gonna come in later, Kim? Uh, it's been 
the phone right now. I'm trying to breathe. Can I call you back? All right, baby. I love you. Love you too. Okay. With an enormous amount of evidence, agents closed the case and returned to headquarters, ready to bring the truth to a heartsick Antonelle. Having confirmed the suspect's infidelities, Cheaters prepares the information for Antonelle's scrutiny. Stressed by heartache, Antonelle prepares herself to view the unsavory truth. So how are you doing today, Antonella? I'm doing fine. I just want to say thank you for coming out here today. We conducted our investigation and came up with some very interesting findings. Yes. Are you prepared to see that? Yes. All right. On this day of investigation, we are outside of your home. Ken comes outside, walks down the street. Yeah, he walks to work. OK. And then he's picked up by that unknown vehicle. Our detectives follow them and they arrive at Ken's workplace. Okay. He works at a cell phone store. Yeah. yeah, that's when he reaches in, embraces the female, closes the door, and goes in for a day of work. Around lunchtime, our detectives see Ken exit his workplace, gets into that same female's vehicle. They drive a short distance and arrive at this fast food establishment. We then see them inside sitting together, enjoying a meal. A few moments later, they exit together, get back into her vehicle with him now driving. Our detectives follow them and they arrive back at Ken's work. That's when we see him outside the vehicle, they embrace, give each other a hug, and Ken returns to work for the rest of the day. Are you all right? Yeah. Are you gonna be okay? Yeah. You sure? Mm-hmm. All right. I just wanna show you the rest of this so we can get you your answers. Okay. All right. On this day of investigation, we are outside of your home. Ken emerges texting on his cell phone, walks across the street, and gets picked up by that same vehicle. They arrive at Ken's workplace, exit the vehicle, and that's when we see them outside, playfully kissing. She gives him a hug. She leaves, and he returns to work for the rest of the day. I just wanna find out where he is. Absolutely. We know their exact location. We can get out of here, and on the way, I'll give the detective a call. Find out if there's been any movement. Are you okay with that? I'm fine. All right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. I promise you. Thank you. Let's go right this way. So, Antonelle, I'm going to go ahead and give our detective a call right now and find out if there's been any movement on their location. Okay. Hey, Detective Gomez, what's going on, man? So let me get let me get this correct. She dropped him off this morning at work. She returned to she returned to his workplace around lunch and is there right now. I don't even get to eat lunch with him. He always tell me they gotta work. Okay. All right, well thank you, Detective Gomez, and we'll see you shortly. Bye-bye. Do you believe this woman has any notion that you are Well if she doesn't, she's gonna find out today. She will know in a minute. She don't know. She's going to find out. After we make a left here, we're going to pull into this parking lot, and we are here. Yep, this is it. There's our detective right there. And there's her car, so she is here. Mm, yeah, I see. The same car. How are you, man? Hey, how's it going? Good, Great. good Great. to see you. Hey, you ready? Ready yeah, to do this? Let's go. Great, let's go. Everybody out. Everybody out. Everybody out. Scooby, did you know?
He was in a relationship for no, two years. I didn't know he was in a relationship. Well, like, how long you been with him, bitch? Thing? So huh? How long you been with him? Your job, bitch. Your job. Huh? Ho, you got me up, ho. You got me up. Huh? You want to play with a bitch like me? You want, bitch, get away from me. Let me talk to y'all, ho. He's actually been giving away free accessories at your store. You didn't know that? Yeah, I have, it all, I have a full surveillance tape if you see it of him giving free stuff away. But long story short, that's that's what's been going on. So. It's cool. You get you out my house, ho. You get out my house. You get out my house. How long you been with him? Say, you hear me? Oh, he bought that phone, baby? He bought the, oh, he bought that one? Let me see. Let me see. Boo, that's your way. Let me see. Let me see the phone, boo. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. You protecting this hoe? You in my house? You protecting this hoe? Come on, let's go. Let me see the phone he bought. You. He bought that. Hey, watch out. He bought that phone. Yeah, this one right He bought that. He bought that phone. Let me see that phone. Ken, Ken, can I can I get your side of the story, man? Ken. So you're supporting the neighborhood? Yeah. Well, we, well the problem is, hey. man, is you, you're giving away free stuff in your store. I'm supporting everybody, you hear me? I'm supporting everybody. You're supporting I everybody? Yeah. I ain't true. I ain't true. That's your girlfriend of two years, though. That's your girlfriend of two years? <laughs> Don't make me break this window, Ken. Don't make me break this window. Get out the car, hoe. Get out the car, hoe. Get out for what? Yeah, you a pill, bitch. You a pill? You a pill, bitch? Yeah, I'm burning all your... You get out of my house, hoe. I beat you, though. You get out of my house, hoe. I beat you, though. Bitch, I bet you won't get out the car then, hoe. I beat you, though. You fuck ass bitch. your job. Hey, I did two two years in the joint. Hey, yo. Bust for your mother with this, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. your job and your girl hey are you all right yeah you want to get out of here yes. all right let's go please please i just want to go home all right let's get across the street and i can't believe you embarrassed me like that i'm burning out your house. 
You all right? Yeah. He airs me like that. Come on, let's go. Let's load up. Hey, she's right there. She's back. That girl. She's right there. She's right there, right around the corner, rolling down her window. I don't want to fight you, little mama. I cannot talk to you. Can I ask you a question? Oh, I just want to ask you a hey, question. Wait, I ain't wait, trying wait. to fight you, little Excuse mama. Excuse me. Just answer you know some saying? questions he for her. Like he played me. Just answer some questions for her. About up, you hey, you been in my house? Yeah, I've been in your house. So how long y'all been around? Say, you need to talk to him. Don't ask me no questions. But he playing you, too. Nah, he ain't playing. He, 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 he playing my bills. He, he paying my bills. Hey, he also he said he's getting out. He playing my bills, too. That's how we do it. You not the first? You not the only one he paying bills? He said he's about to go find another girl with all those phones in his hand. Yeah. No, he ain't finna find another girl. Yeah, he gonna find another girl. Right he gonna do you like he did me, little mama. I hate dumb hoes. Real talk. I hate dumb bitches like you. You make real woman look bad. Real talk. I you know he got a girl. You a slut hoe. Hey, I'm a same real woman. Damn time. It's okay. Pippin you ain't easy. I'm a real woman, woman, bitch. I just wanna let the women know. Before you introduce the man to your children, find out what kind of man he is first. Make sure he's the man for your kids. So look up for that father figure. And don't move a man in too fast. Thank you. Thank y'all. Coming up next, Cheaters. Christopher Schneider offers lifelong support and Christopher dreams of a marriage with someone kind and caring. Lately, though, Christopher has had second thoughts about whether his longtime girlfriend has the same notions about commitment. Daring to discover the truth, Christopher makes a desperate appeal to the Cheaters Detective Agency. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Uh, the turning point when the relationship started changing was actually in Mexico. Um, we were supposed to get married two years ago when we went down there, and um, she just basically, I don't know if she was faking or not, but she got sick all of a sudden and couldn't get married because she was too sick. I was all excited to get married, and before I know it, she just started acting a little bit different. Erin Estevez, age 28. An office worker suspected of moving illicitly up the corporate ladder. After a thorough briefing, Cheater sends a team of professionals to stake out the suspect's place of employment. Hours into the shift, they spot the suspect, Aaron Estevez, coming out of the building and driving away. The suspect arrives at a shopping mall. Estevez gets out and goes inside to meet with an unknown man. When I try to set up another date to get married, her attitude just basically changes all of a sudden. It's like she'll snap. Either she'll try to blow it off, or she'll get this weird look in her eye that I never saw before. She keeps her phone on her hip when I'm around. It's like, God forbid, if I ever went to touch it or look at it, she just basically will snap at me. Don't touch my stuff. Don't do this. Don't do that. After spending some time window shopping, Estevez and her boy toy decide to leave. They both get into her vehicle and drive to their next destination. Cups of Java warm the two as they grab a seat on the patio. Uh, well, it's been about four months since the last time we had sex. And uh, basically, every time I try to initiate something, when we lay down, she's either, I'm tired, I'm not in the mood. She gets angry sometimes. It's left to me sleeping on the couch sometime and just, or her sleeping on the couch. After a while, Estevez and her friend make their way back to her vehicle. The suspect drives her paramour back to his place of employment. As he returns to work, Estevez turns around and drives home for the evening. If Aaron's cheating on me, it's basically just, it's like she, I gave her my heart and she took it and threw it on the ground and stomped on it and then handed it back to me in, in pieces. It's definitely gonna, I mean, it hurts already not knowing, but it's definitely, it's gonna have an effect on me. I'm gonna be sad and I don't know what I'm gonna do actually. Hoping to discover more concrete evidence, Cheater's mobile crews keep at their stations at the suspect's workplace. The hard work pays off when Cheater's operatives spot Estevez as she finishes her day. The suspect hops into her sedan and drives to a restaurant. 
Estevez meets with her clandestine friend, now identified as Pat Connolly. They enter the restaurant, and inside, Estevez gets intimate with her date, feeding him romantically and kissing him over the food. The meal has sated their appetites, but not their lust for each other. Estevez and her mysterious man drive to a nearby park. They exit the car, hand in hand, for a late night stroll. The pair stop long enough to swap a few kisses. A short time later, the suspect drops her date off at his workplace. As her date leaves, Estevez returns home to a lonely Christopher. Cheaters agents continue to stake out the suspect's place of employment. At the end of the day, Estevez leaves her work and heads to a nearby restaurant. Estevez waits for a while before Conley shows up and gets into her car. A few minutes later, they drive away while being followed by a cheater's team and arrive at a grocery store. Estevez grins and leads her new man into the store. After a while, Estevez and Conley emerge from the store. The conniving pair drive away to an unknown apartment. Conley escorts his date upstairs. Estevez stays a very long time, eventually coming out alone. The suspect drives home to an unsuspecting Christopher. Collating all of his girlfriend's deceitful actions into one case file, Cheater summons Christopher to view the findings. Nervously anticipating the verdict, Christopher steadies himself for the disturbing truth. Chris, uh, first thing I'd like to say is thank you for coming out. Uh, I know you kind of got a busy schedule and a lot going on right now, but we uh, are really happy you're able to make it with us tonight. Well, Chris, as you know, we have conducted our investigation and come up with some findings now. Are you ready to see that? I guess so. Okay. We begin our investigation outside of Aaron's workplace. Continuing on, she gets into her vehicle, and a while later, she arrives at a shopping mall. As our detectives follow her into the mall, she goes into a phone store and is greeted by this male. Do you recognize him, Chris? No, I don't, actually. Never seen him before? No. A while later, they leave together. Walk through the mall as our detectives watch. Who is this clown? They proceed to get into her vehicle, and they drive away. Our detectives follow them. They arrive at a coffee shop. They go inside, get two cups of coffee, sit down, and begin to converse back and forth. A while later, after finishing up their coffee, they leave, go back to her vehicle, and they get inside. She drops him off back at his workplace, and then she returns home for the evening. Continuing on, on this day of our investigation, Erin leaves work. She walks outside, gets into her vehicle. After some time, she arrives at a restaurant. She sits and waits in her car. And a while later, the unknown male arrives, Again. gets in the passenger side of Aaron's vehicle. And a while later, they arrive at a grocery store. That's when we see this gentleman come and open her car door. After opening the door for her, they proceed to walk inside together. And then Aaron receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. So, Chris, tell me if you remember this. Hey, babe. Hey, honey. How are you? I'm tired as hell. Just having a beer, watching TV. Just needed to let you know that my sister's flight was delayed. I told her I'd pick up the cats from the center. Apparently, they don't have food, so I got to go take care of that. Don't worry about waiting up for me or dinner. I'm just going to grab something at her place. You sure you don't want me to get you food? Oh, yes. I'm fine, sweetie. You're tired. Just go ahead and get some rest. All right. Well, don't wake me up. Well, take care. I'll see you soon. Love you. Love you too, babe. Bye. Bye. Not anymore. So you do, you do remember talking to her? Yeah. After finishing up that phone call with you, completely lying about where she was, she then exits the grocery store. They drive away as our detectives follow, and a while later they arrive at this unknown apartment. I take it that's not your place. No, not at all. She leaves the apartment alone. Oh, God. She gets into her vehicle and proceeds to return home for the evening. Chris, with what you've just seen, I understand it's really hard. I, I completely understand, but is this making a lot more sense now? Yeah. Chris, at this point in time, we have an exact location. We know where they're at. They're at a car wash very close to here. 
So my question for you is, are you ready to confront them? I guess it's a waste of four years, but it'd be good to go ahead and try to get it over with. All right. The main thing is, is I want you to be satisfied with how this, how the outcome of this is. So I'm going to do my best. It's going to be hard, but it's, it, it is, is what, what it is. is. Absolutely. All right, man. Yeah, this is it up here. Is it on the right? Yep, there it is. All right, when you see that blue sob in there, I'm going to want you to pull right in front of it. Go through it and park right in front of it. They can't get out. Lock them in. There they are right there. That yeah, car's that's covered. Your car. All right. Get everyone out. That's exactly who it is. happened? How did this start? This guy? I'm just curious. How did this start? Aaron. Aaron, you got to give me something. You got to give me something. Tell me what happened. This isn't about making anybody upset. What the f man? What the f to you? You started to like air out in front of everybody? To you. You could have just asked. You could have just talked to me. There's a reason why I haven't said a new day. And you're a whore. There's a reason why I haven't said a new day. Because you do stupid. You do stupid. You air out. Everybody. Yeah, look at you, you leprechaun looking mother. I was getting it right now. Thanks for your it up with the yeah. cab crews. Suck it, small. Aaron, she have not, you have nothing hey, to say. She's just gonna do it to you. Maybe sorry. She's a whore. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry, Chris. I'm sorry, Chris. I'm sorry, Chris, that you yeah. had to approach situation. Yeah, I'm sorry that I wasted four years on you. Where are you gonna go? Just in circles? You have nowhere to go. We have your we have your car blocked in. So if you wanna cooperate, we'll let you go if you wanna give us some answers. But until then, I don't think you guys are going anywhere. Yeah. Just tell me why. That's all we're here tell for. Tell me why. That's why I had to get this whole Over damn show. A long time ago, you to come knew after you. you're the one who wanted to stay and try and work and things out after I tried to break to you me. up with you constantly. You over, over and you over, go over to sleep. Again. Like, well, haven't had sex in four months. Well, maybe it's because I don't enjoy four having sex with you. Months. Have you ever thought about that? You smell have, you ever anyway. thought, have you ever yeah. thought that maybe it has something to do with you and it's not me? Yeah. Like, if it's to do with me, it's called communication. That's yeah. what relationships are about. Yeah, and you've got with me before you brought That's all this around. Now, how are we supposed to work anything out You're lucky now? That I, That's not I don't have women. It's You're not lucky gonna I don't have women. It's not going to happen. You're now. lucky. All right. I should shake the shit out of you. We need a out of here. No. Tell me why. Hey. I got one question for you, Aaron. Tell me why. I got one question for you. Tell me why. If you don't love this man, why would you tell him on the phone? You remember this phone conversation? Yeah. Remember this Whatever. Seriously. You I remember saw this? the video, Kate. You can't you, lie. You don't remember this? You can't lie. I saw the tape. <laughs> this is you guys shopping together? I don't want you anymore. Aaron, all, all I'm asking is for answer. That's all. 
and then we'll leave you guys alone. Seriously, give me an answer. Chris, That's why I had to get him. Chris, Chris, tell we, me an honest answer. Honest answer. You say you love him right here. When you're shopping with a he him. looks like a troll. Do you care about him? Are you kidding me? Come on. Hey, Aaron. Yeah. Poofy hair troll. Give your boy some answers. He takes care of me better than you. He takes care of my needs way better yeah. than you do. Okay. Yeah, are you using money too? Are you using his money too? She's just gonna use you, bro. Pat, how long has this been going on? With her? We've been dating for like, for like, wow. How long? Come on. How many other times did you cheat on me? How many you other times you sucked in the parking lot? Now. The fact that you're now just sucking in the parking lot. How many other times you sucked in the It's freaking cold Pat. outside. Yeah. Washing you your seen car. Seeing her do this to this man, this man, how do you know she's not gonna do this to you? No. Doesn't that make you a little bit worried? Maybe just a little bit, but you know what? I mean, she doesn't even let him look through her cell phone. Man, she's so nice. Like, she never shows me drama. We just talk, have a good time. <sighs> Do you still like this guy? Or... What? No, she doesn't. She no, doesn't what? like you. Chris, we're done. You're just another like, this just, good. This just I'm like, like is the Maraschino cherry on top of the Sunday? Like, we're you're done. Nasty. We are done. You are you nasty. You didn't think I was nasty. Yeah, yeah, this is why every time I tried to break up with you, you're still trying to get with me. Yeah. You saw all this coming it's from called a reason. Love. There's it's a called reason love. why it's fucking my heart. day, you okay? You do it on the ground and stop on it. God! And you, get the away. You going to roll? You want to go? I'll choke your ass out. Oh, yeah? Yeah, hey. mother... <laughs> yeah. Sick. Hey, you stay back. You carry diseases. You know that, right? You know that, right? She's gonna Chris. give you. Chris. She's got oh, herpes, you got man. Something? Yeah, I do. I gave it to her. Oh. Yeah, now you're gonna yeah, get it. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Herpes, it's you're nasty, nasty, you're nasty just desperate. like you. You're it's desperate. nasty That's just like it. you. You're desperate. Yeah. You're desperate. I've I'm had so many opportunities. I understand that I've you're had bothered so many that this happened, but there are different ways. Your sister want to know There are different ways to approach a situation, and this is not one of them. This is not gonna make me want to happen. This is horrible. Like this and you want to be with you. Guys. Y'all, get the out of my face. Seriously. Yeah, you better get cleaned off. Hey, watch out. Hey. Yeah. Hey. You better get cleaned off. Straight up harassment. Yeah. And my sister, by the way, will not want anything to do with you after she sees this. Okay? Because you're acting like a and ass. Yeah, and yeah. you're not even wearing your rings. You stashed that away? Is that in your glove box? Never huh? wear them. I've never seen a ring once. She had one on when you guys went shopping. You don't remember that, Pat? With you on a phone call with Chris saying that she loves him. Do you like this guy? You want to hang out why with would you? Like, why would you? Tell yeah, I found, I found it. You took my heart and you ripped it out. I don't know what's going on. But... Will y'all please move these cars? Who is this mother? You ready, Chris? Yeah. Deal with this whore anymore. Good. Let's go. Load up. Hello. Pop in, man. Get these, please get these cars out of the way, please. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Bye, whore. Shut the f Chris. Bye. And I'll edit. You I'll too. Pick up got my stuff. Don't worry about it. I'll make sure my friend comes to pick up my from your house, okay? We're gonna have another. You. You. You and you too. Yeah. Peace. Bitch. Here. Like, this yeah, is ridiculous. Good. This is harassment. This is, this is what it is. Yeah. It's harassment. Oh, out of here. I'm done with her. I'm done. I don't want to ever see that whore again. Her stuff will be in the front yard tomorrow. Tomorrow. The brutality of the confrontation leaves Christopher with the reality of his relationship. Later in the show, Cheaters reveals Christopher's next step. 